Today on Fish Den 365, we're going to be talking about spoon fishing. It's all about vertical jigging spoons. Hi everybody, I'm Den Herring and welcome back to my channel, Fish Den 365. Today we're going to go in depth on spoon fishing. This is going to be a good one. You're going to want to watch this one. So if you've never spoon fished before, this is an absolute must watch. And if you've gone spoon fishing and had success on spoons, you're going to want to watch this also because you might see some things here that could add to your catch, that could up your catch rate. So we're going to get right into it. Let's get started. So the first thing about spoons, well, what is a spoon? Well, there are different types of spoons. For the sake of this video, it's going to be an in-depth video. We want to talk about casting spoons. And you can't really talk about a casting spoon without talking about the, the Hopkins Shorty. This was one of the standards, the standard bearer when it comes to, uh, ca when it comes to vertical jigging spoons. And uh, the Hopkins Shorty has caught a gazillion fish over the years. And I've caught my share of fish on this on this bait too. I like the Hopkins Shorty. It's not one of my favorite spoons. I have spoons that I like better than it, but it is a good standard spoon to fish. This color silver is good. I like white too. White is sometimes a very good uh, color to throw with the Hopkins Shorty. A good one to throw there. So when I look at spoon fishing, I think about a vertical presentation with these jigging spoons. Now that doesn't mean that you have to be right at the edge of your boat and dropping the bait down. That's one way you can fish, but you could also throw short casts or even a medium length cast out there and still vertically fish that bait up and down. We're going to explain in this video how we do that and why it's good to do that and how you can cover water that way. When I look at spoon fishing, it's a lot like fishing a blade bait. A lot like these type of baits. This is a Bass Pro Shops laser blade. And if you want to see a very good tutorial about blade baits, I'll leave a link right up here so that you can check that one out as soon as you're done watching this. So when you th when I throw a blade bait, you know it's all about that vertical presentation. Same thing with a spoon. The difference is the action of a spoon is quite different than a blade bait. I started fishing vertically fishing like this many years ago, and I started with a blade bait. And then I started to learn the spoon a few years after by fishing it more and more. Today, I actually like to fish a spoon a little better. I think it's a little more of an effective bait than, than the blade bait is. But they both have their time and place. And sometimes when one works, the other does not and vice versa. For example, I've had days where I threw the blade bait and could not get bit. Picked up a spoon immediately and started getting bit. That told me that the fish weren't in the mood for the blade bait for whatever reason but wanted the spoon. And the opposite has happened with me also, where I might be out there on my own or with a partner, I'm throwing a spoon, partner's throwing a blade bait, partner's catching fish, I'm not, I switch to a blade bait, I catch fish. This is why it's good to have both. But again, this is about spoon fishing and everything you want to learn about fishing the vertical spoon. So let's go a little further with this. The trick with the spoon is the fall. And this is the, the hardest thing to learn about the spoon, but once you learn it, it becomes like riding a bike. You don't forget it, it just becomes automatic. It becomes automatic and you'll, won't, you just know what to do. So how do you fish a spoon like this? I have my rod right here with a spoon tied on. We're gonna go into all the different types of spoons in a little bit, but we wanna talk a little bit about the how and, and the what with spoons first. And, and the how is how you fish this, how you let this thing drop. So if you're letting this drop on a tight line, in other words, if there's no slack in your line as the bait's dropping, then it's just gonna fall like this. And uh, that doesn't really have any enticing action to it, right? So, but if you leave a little bit of slack, if you have a, a taut but not tight line, in other words, just a little slack in that line as it's falling, that's where the spoon does its magic because as it's falling, it's doing this. It's, it's, it's wobbling and wiggling and, and actually rocking back and forth. And it just looks like a bait fish. If you've ever seen a ball of bait fish and they're getting busted, like shad, for example, or alewives, and they're getting busted by the predator fish, and you watch this and you're close enough to see it, you'll see that some of these bait fish are getting slammed and they're getting injured and they just kind of fall like that and, and to the bottom. 
And that's where the bigger predators usually are. And so they're waiting down there below the school where it's, they, they're, high, they're in the, the safety of the depth. And they can just pick on the easy pickings of these injured bait fish, these injured, you know, prey. And so that's the magic of a spoon. But the but you got to be able to throw that out there or let it come off your your uh, reel and rod in a way where it has that rocking motion. It rocks back and forth while it twists. And so that is the key. And there's a couple ways that you can have this happen. One, you know, I've I've watched a video recently where the person that was talking about spoon fishing liked to just have the spoon set up they just pitch it out in front of them or drop it right off the front of their boat and they would set their spool loosely and they would just click the button and they'd let it fall and the reason why they wanted to do that was because they wanted it to get to the bottom real fast so that they can fish it uh, right away because usually when you're fishing these spoons you're targeting fish that are on the bottom or very close to the bottom so their idea was just click this just click this spool let it go to the bottom as fast as you can but when you if you do that you're more than likely to have the spoon just fall like this and so I don't like to fish it that way I, when I first cast it out I do a few different things and I have a good reason for that the reason is that a pretty good percentage of my fish of the fish I catch on a spoon come on the initial fall they come on when I first cast it out, it hits the water and it goes down. And so it's important to me that that initial fall has that action that I want, right? I want that spoon to be rocking and, and uh, the motion that a spoon has. So how do you get that to happen? There's two ways that I do it. One is I'll pitch the spoon out some distance or I'll cast it to maybe a quarter to a, ha a third of, of my total cast distance, which with a spoon, a heavy spoon could be a long way. So I don't want to cast it too far, but I do have a, a decent distance of casting. So let's just say I pitch that spoon out there. So I pitch it out there, and the first thing that I'll do is when it hits the water, I will keep this spool loose, and I'll just lift it up so that I have some slack line between my spoon and, and the rod tip. And then I'll let it fall. So I can now click that spool, and because I'm some distance away and there's some slack line between me and the and the spoon if I just if I need to to have a little more slack line so that spoon falls the right way all I got to do is get on my trolling motor and go go towards the spoon a little bit so the trick is your line is taut but not tight it's just a little bit of slack in there and that'll allow that spoon to fall the right way the first time and believe me Many times I get that bite, especially when I'm striper fishing. It happens a lot where the very first fall is when I get bit. And also with smallmouth bass, it's important. So now I've got my spoon falling the right way. It hits bottom. How do I know it hits bottom? My line will go completely slack. That's how I know I'm on the bottom. Or a fish hit it. And if that's the case, you're pumping it back up anyway. So then it's just a matter of jigging it up and down now. And, and uh, each time you jig it up, you want to make sure that you drop your rod down when you want that spoon to fall back to the bottom you drop it down so that there's just a little bit of slack in the line taut but not tight that allows that spoon to fall right back down to the bottom again and it's just a matter of experimentation from there you can do a double pump up and then down or one pump up you can do a high lift with the rod and in that in that case the spoon's going to be coming off the bottom you know several feet four or five feet feet or more or you can do a, just a small lift, you know, where you're only a foot coming up off a foot off the bottom, or maybe just even inches. You have to experiment with that, and it kind of depends with about where the fish are in the water column. But that's the first and foremost thing is to get used to that drop, that spoon fluttering down, because it's got that fluttering action. That's what's triggering the fish. Um, you know, and this is true with blade baits too. What, usually the bites are coming on the fall. Now sometimes with a blade bait, the bite will come when you, when you start to lift up because it vibrates then. But most of the time, even on a blade bait, it's coming, the strike is coming on the fall and even more so with the spoon. That strike comes on the fall. When you lift it up, sometimes they'll come up and grab it then. But I'd say 90 to 95% of the time, it's on the fall. And so you want that bait to fall the right way. And so that's the first and foremost point of this video is to make sure that you understand that number one when fishing spoons is to have that fall the way you want it. And the, the, it's not hard to do. It's just a matter of getting out there, playing around with it, practicing it, getting a feel for it. 
but believe me, it's well worth practicing because these spoons catch fish. They catch everything you can think of. I'm just gonna name some of the species of fish that I caught on the spoon over the years in fresh water. I've caught trout, rainbow trout. I've caught bluegills, perch, crappie, smallmouth, largemouth bass, stripers, hybrid stripers, northern pike, musky, chain pickerel, catfish. Recently, I caught a giant flathead catfish Take a look at this. So, and I've caught channel catfish on the spoon too. It catches everything. And, and it's a very effective bait to fish specifically two times a year. It'll catch fish all of the time. Every, any time of the year that you throw it, it's, it's capable of catching fish. But there are two times when it's, when it's really the shines as being the best thing to throw. Number one is in the deep summertime when the fish are setting up in the thermocline and they're going deeper. This is a great time to fish a spoon. I like fishing them under docks in, in, in some of these deeper dock lakes where you have, you know, 25, 30 feet under some docks. I like pitching spoons under them. Be surprised how many times you can catch fish that way. So summertime, middle of summer is a good time. Ultimately, in my mind, the best time to fish is, is right into the winter. They're good in the fall, all the way through fall. When the fish start to conjugate and they start pulling off of their shallow water areas and they start bunching together and schooling up, the spoon is the thing to be thrown. And this is the time of the year, right? You, you want to, as the fall progresses into winter and that water temperature begins to drop more and more, the fish will conjugate. They're, they might be harder to find, but when you do find them, there's going to be more than one. And that vertically, that vertical presentation of throwing a spoon down over them is, is just fantastic. So winter time is, in my mind, the, probably the best time to throw a spoon, although you can catch fish on it any time of the year. And you know, so what water temperatures are we talking about? Well, I would say as soon as that water's going into the 50s and downward, a spoon becomes more and more important to throw. And as it gets into the 40s and even into the high and mid 30s, it's a, it's a mainstay for me because I can fish I can fish a reaction bait, a reaction type bait, which a spoon is, and it allows me to fish a little bit faster and cover more water. For example, if I was trying to find fish, I'm, you know, I'm using my fish finder, active fish, fish that are going to bite. You know, I'll, I'll look with the finder, obviously, and, and if I see a, something down there, I'm not sure what species they are, I can throw a spoon and figure that out a lot faster than if I was to throw, say, a drop shot or a soft plastic because I have to fish that slower. A drop shot, you're just kind of letting it down there, and, and, but a spoon, I could pitch it out, jig it up and down, cover some water, maybe throw it out there 30, 40, 50 feet and, uh, and move towards it while I'm covering water and then I finish that cast and I pitch it right back out there and I'm doing the same thing again so I can cover water a lot quicker with a spoon than I can with say something like a, like a soft plastic a small tiny jig or a drop shot presentation. Now there's another way I like to fish the spoon and before I get too far into it we'll discuss that now. So that is, I've already told you I like to pitch it out there some distance away from me and use that method. The other method that I like a lot, especially when I see something on the fish finder that's just below me, is just to drop it right in the water and just let it go straight down. But I don't, I don't use the, I don't use the spool to allow it to go down. Instead, I'll engage my spool and I'll just feed it line and and uh, with my hand like this. And as I, as I take one handful out, the bait's going down. And just as I'm ready to get that next handful, the bait's going down. You can actually get into a real nice rhythm where you're feeding the line and, and you never have so much slack that you don't feel a bite. And at the same time, the spoon's not just going straight down like this. You can allow it to flutter just by feeding it line. And I learned that, that technique by watching a video that I'm gonna share with you right now. It was uh, a video that was done by Larry Nixon. And this is a video that's been out for quite a long time. It's called Larry Nixon's Tournament Tactics for Locating Fall Season Bass. This video, I, I, just so you know, I, you know, I'm a student of fishing. I, I've got literally over a hundred videos just about fishing. And this one is probably the, my favorite one of all of them. I still, this one's worn out because I still like to watch this thing. He's going fishing several times in the fall on this video. And each time he goes, it's a few weeks later and it's getting colder and colder and those fish are conjugating more and more. And he shows you how he locates them. 
He uses a spoon to catch a bunch of them. And uh, watching this video is really where I learned how to fish the spoon. I emulated what I saw here. So thank you to Larry Nixon. This guy's a great fisherman. And uh, I would recommend this video if you can get your hands on it. It's an old video. I don't know if it's out there anymore, but it's a good one. So you just feed the line out. And if you, if you were to feel a bite, you know, that might be a tick or a little bit of a thump. You would just quickly engage the, the, uh, the handle so that you don't have a loose spool. Because if you go set that hook on a loose spool, the line's just, the, the, the spool's just going to spin around and you're not going to catch that fish. But you can quick hit the handle and set the hook and then uh, get the fish in. So the other thing about that is once you do hook a fish on the spoon, and again, this is very similar to a blade bait, and it's even more important because a blade bait most of the time will have two hooks on it. But many times when you fish a spoon, it only has one, and they're heavy. So and they could be they're front heavy, they're top heavy in a lot of cases. A casting spoon, a, a jigging spoon, I mean. And so when you hook a fish, it's really important how you fight that fish. You're going to need a rod. You want a rod that has a fast tip so that you can work the spoon. But then you also want this rod to bend down into the rod pretty far so that the fish has a harder time creating slack and getting off because when a heavy spoon like this that might weigh five eighths of an ounce like this one does when that fish is fighting and shaking his mouth and and if he comes out of the water they can the, the spoon could just fall out of their mouth because it's so darn heavy so number one is you don't want the fish to come out of the water you want to you want to keep your rod down if the fish is coming up you point your rod down into the water and you snub him down so that he can't jump so easily and you also, you just crank them in, basically. So you're putting constant pressure on the fish with a spoon. You want to get that thing into the boat. And I would even suggest that if you can, that if you can uh, use your rod to swing them in, just go ahead and do that. Because once you have that fish in a certain motion coming to the boat, if that fish isn't too big for you to swing in, just get them up and into the boat right away. Because when you, if you have to go and get a net, that's when that fish can get off because that's when as you're getting the net or bending over with the net it might just leave a little slack in the line and the next thing you know the spoon pulls out on you so um, if it's a big fish you gotta net them though because uh, you take a bigger risk trying to get the fish in you might break your line you could break your rod you don't want those things so you use a net then but if it's a fish that uh, you know is a couple pounds or whatever you just just uh, lift them right into the boat and you're good so what about uh, tying your your line to the spoon this is a good one too usually these spoons will come with a split ring on them and you can tie right to that split ring but i don't recommend it some people like to use a snap with a swivel an actual swivel that spins and the reason for that is a spoon can twist your line because it's it's doing that wobbling and and, and it could actually spin around and twist your line but I don't use a swivel. I, I found that for the spoons that I fish, I don't need them. I just use a snap. And I'm going to show this snap to you. I've showed this in other videos. It's a very small snap. Hopefully you can see that. It's the tiniest snap I can find. And uh, I'll sometimes have a split ring on there. Or if I have a big enough opening like on this spoon, I'll just put the snap right on there and, and that's fine. I don't need a split ring. And what I find with the snap is it's just less likely to twist. That snaps on there, there's a lot of room for this thing to move and fall. I might get just a little line twist, but I've never had trouble. I always fish a spoon, especially these heavier spoons. I've always fished them on a bait caster. Usually it's a medium action bait casting rod. This one is a Daiwa Light and Tough series rod. This is a rod that's been around for a long time, but I really like them quite a bit. And uh, so, I just like using that snap. I don't have problems with line twisting. If there's a little bit of twist, all I'll do is I'll just hold the bait at the end of my rod, let five feet of line out, and just let it untwist itself. But I've never had a problem where it was twisting right back into the reel. And so therefore, I don't, I don't use a, a swivel. Now, that doesn't mean that there isn't certain spoons out there that you really should use one. The spoons that I fish, I, I find I don't need it. So that's, and I'm going to share all those spoons with you in, in, in a little bit. So I'm gonna, share with you now some of the, the spoons that I like to fish. We've already mentioned the Hopkins Shorty. The next one I want to show you here is this is a Jan's Netcraft spoon. A lot of you are familiar with Jan's Netcraft. 
they're a tackle uh, supplier where you can build your own baits. They have all kinds of stuff. You, they have molds for lead, but they sell these these spoons. I think they're called a laser spoon. I like this color a lot. This is like an alewife color. These are two different sizes. I think this might be half ounce. This might be five eighths or three quarters. You have to size your hooks accordingly. Another thing that I like to do with spoons, and this is one of the things I do in the winter time, is I like to have a tail feather on them like that. It's very simple. All you do is have three feathers, maybe a little bit of red thread, tie it on there, use a vise, and uh, this is a number four Gamagatsu. I change all my hooks on spoons to Gamagatsu EWGs. That stands for extra wide gap. They, they turn inward a little bit, so when you hook a fish, it holds them a whole lot better than just a round bed would. And uh, I really swear by these hooks, they hold fish very well. I like this laser spoon. They're, they come in a bunch of different colors. You can get a bunch of them real cheap. You know, they don't cost much. They don't come with any hardware on them. You just buy them at Jan's. And, uh, but they're, they're good spoons. They catch a lot of fish. They're great on perch, especially this smaller one. I caught tons of perch on this. They catch bluegills, but they catch smallmouth quite well too. So this is a real good spoon. We already mentioned the Hopkins Shorty, that's a mainstay. Uh, probably my favorite spoon to fish is a Blade Runner Duh Spoon, D-U-H, or the, maybe it means duh, uh, duh, this, I don't know, Duh Spoon, that's it. That's what it's called, it's made by Blade Runner. They've been out for a long, for quite a while. This is a chartreuse pattern one. Uh, if I'm fishing stained water, I like to throw that quite a bit. Here's another one that I like quite a bit. It's got that uh, greenish emerald type color to it. Good shad pattern. They've got, uh, you know, black, simple black and white. I fish that probably as much as anything, especially in clear water with a little white tail feather on there. Really good bait to fish. And so that's probably the spoon that I fish the most. And, you know, there's some modifications that you can do with these spoons to, to change some things up. One of the mods that I've done is I will take the spoon, and this is one of those Blade Runner dust spoons, and you see I got a hook on the front and the back. And what I've done is I drill a hole in the back and I put the snap on the back. And by doing that, when you throw the bait out, it still falls like a spoon. It has that, uh, that fluttering action where it's going back down to the bottom. But when you pull it up with the, with the snap here, it now will wobble, much like a blade bait. So I still look at this more as, a, you know, it's a hybrid, right? Because it, it acts a little like a blade bait when you lift it up, but it falls like a spoon. And if you remember, I've said 90 to 95% of my catches on a spoon are on the fall. So I still look at this as more of a spoon than a blade bait, but it just gives a different action. And it's got two hooks, more importantly. And so I have a little bit of a better hookup percentage and a, and a better hook to land ratio on my bait. So an interesting thing there, now you can make your own or you can just go and buy the, the, where I got the idea from. I just didn't realize that this was something that you can buy originally. But this is, a, this is it here. This is made by Sibyl. It's called the Sibyl Vibrato. I've talked about this in other videos. You can see it's got a big hole in the back there. And it's got the two hooks. So you can put your snap in there. It falls like a, uh, like a spoon. It, sputters, it flutters like a spoon. But when you lift up, it's got quite a bit of vibration on it like a blade bait does. And they come in different sizes too. Here's a, here's a bigger one. So uh, these things catch fish. If you haven't fished one of these, you may want to try it because uh, it's just a little bit something different. And most people, I don't think, are throwing those, those baits yet. And they, uh, they catch fish. So a couple of different spoons. that are, Those are basically the spoons that I fish the most. There's some others out there that you can actually bend the spoon. The metal is pliable, flexible a little bit. I've played with those already. By bending the spoon, you get a little bit of, bit of a different action as the bait's falling. You get this different kind of fall or maybe more, a more pronounced flutter as it's falling. Sometimes the fish like that. These spoons can be fished in very, very deep water effectively. I've caught walleyes down in 50, 55 feet at Beltsville on spoons. And uh, so, you know, if anything that you see on that graph down below you, if it's deep, this is a good way to see what that is down there. Fish the spoon down there and see if you can't get a hookup. And if you do hook a fish on a spoon, you want to get it to the boat as fast as you can. 
and get your spoon right back out there because a lot of times what happens with these schools of fish that are down there deep, you kind of activate them, they get excited, especially small mouths. This will happen, they get a little bit excited, you catch one and then you can get right back down there and while they're still excited and or, or uh, fired up and while you still have them fired up, get that spoon right back down there and you'll get another bite and another bite. And sometimes they'll actually follow the, the as you're reeling one fish in. Smallmouths do this all the time. They'll follow the other fish as you're reeling it in. And so if you have a partner, they can just pitch the spoon right out there as you're reeling one in, and they'll hook another. And so you can get double hookups that way. And so it's fun. So the the main point there is if you do catch one and there's a school down there, don't waste any time getting another one in there. Get that bait down in there. The sooner you do, the more likely you're going to get bit. What could happen is if you let too much time go by, the school kind of settles back down and they just become a little more reluctant to bite. Or sometimes the school gets separated and it's harder to get the fish to bite because you're not in the school anymore. So that's the other thing that can happen. So we talked about when to fish it, you know, summer, winter, but they're good all year round. We talked about where you can fish these. You know, they're great for deep water applications. They are better in clear water than in dirty water. It's just a, it's better clear water bait. It's probably not the best thing to throw when water is very dirty, especially you know since when the water is real dirty, usually the fish are shallower anyway, and it might not be the best presentation. But you'd be surprised at what you can do with a spoon. Here's a, an example. I've played with spoons with hooks like this. This is a, a kind of a weedless configured hook. It still will catch some weeds, but I've thrown spoons in deep weed beds in the past. And sometimes I don't do so well, but other times when nothing else seems to work, you can trigger some really nice fish. No one else is doing this. You know, very few people are throwing a spoon in a weed bed. But if you can do it, and you figure out how to get that spoon down there to where there's, you know, below the canopy of weeds, you just might find you have a dynamite lure. So just a couple of uh, hints for, for what you can do with a spoon and how you can turn fish on and catch them when no one else is. Well, I hope you found this video to be helpful and I hope it's inspiring you, if you haven't spoon fished, to get out there and try it because it's a very effective way to fish. You know, right now it's mid-late December. It's December 17th today. The water's cold, cooling down out there. This is a perfect time to be spoon fishing right until ice up. So I encourage you to get out there and give it a try. If you like the video, please hit that thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. When you do, you want to hit that bell. That bell is a notification. It'll tell you when the next video is coming out so that you'll know. Keep it tuned here for the channel for the next video. Hope to see you on the water. And as always, may God bless your fishing endeavors.